Okay, guys. Hey, we are uh, on today now. We're doing our video uh, from the 30-30 challenge. So I want to be talking with you about uh, kind of the next question. So uh, this is, listen along, whether you're doing this or not, I'd love for you just to kind of think through some of these things. Uh, but families, this one is for you. You know, as we are going through uh, our 30-30 challenge, our book today uh, actually comes from uh, is the Cornerstones book. So we've been going through that. And uh, each week, uh, I'm putting out a video here, taking on, it's usually every third question. So today we're going to be looking at uh, number seven uh, in here. And this is for you families. It's the section on God. Uh, how can we know God? How can we know God? So uh, I want you to think about that. You know, how, how can you? Have you thought about that? Maybe ask your ki kids the, that. If, if you don't and you're just following along with us, how do you think we can know God? What's the answer to that? You know, um, well, I guess that the answer would kind of be, you'd want to ask yourself, how can you know anybody? Well, of course, the answer is, you know, I, you get to know him. Um, okay, well, how do you get to know God? How do you get to know who he is, what he's like? You see, out there today, uh, the world says, well, you, you can't really know God. Uh, you know, a lot of people will defer to just some sort of um, force, some sort of cosmic force out there, the universe, as they might say, you know, he's not God, he's not really, he's power, something started it, I don't know what it is, and you, you people kind of want to stop, they don't really want to go any further to try to figure it out, but actually the Bible itself tells us that there's, there's two ways in which we can kind of build a knowledge of knowing who God is, so the question that comes today actually comes from the book, and it says, how can we know God? It says, God has revealed himself to us through general revelation and special revelation. God has revealed himself to us through general revelation and special revelation. So let me ask you this. Do you know what that means? Have you ever heard those terms, general and special revelation? So in a nutshell, here's what this means. General revelation is, is out, out, out there, what you can see out there. It's, it's nature. Uh, special revelation is special. It's specialized. It's God's word. So when you want to break this down for your kids, I mean, you could think about probably a lot of different ways to say this. So one of the first things that we mean by that, though, is when we say general revelation is, is you should be able to look out at everything God has created and you should be able to say, you know, where did this all come from? Now, I mean, granted, look, we live in a time that truly believes that something can come from nothing except that that doesn't really actually play out. There's no possibility that something comes from nothing. And so we do need to continue to push that. You know, I've tried to talk with my kids about, you know, like, uh, you know, pick up some of their toys and say, where did this come from? Well, they'll say China, right? Because they, they could look at the bottom and they say, but obviously we talked through it. It came from a factory. It, it had to be put together. It had to be molded together, shaped, and then finally put in a box and shipped here. It, when you look at a toy, you don't say that thing just came together by itself. Sometimes though, we as people living in you know, modern day America, uh, we kind of look at more organic things as pff, just possibility of just coming by chance. But when you even look at something like this, think about it. Look at the diversity here. Why you would have certain plants that would look different. Why? Why? How is it that the sky came to look that it did? The mountains it did. I mean, you could throw out all sorts of explanations, but I think this is a great thing to talk about with people. Talk about with kids. Just go along on a walk, as the scriptures say. As you walk along the road, you begin to look and you begin to say, uh, "Look, where did you think this came from? Where, where, you know what these are about? Yeah, I mean, think about all those different plants. Maybe you don't know a lot about them, but begin just to look at them closely. You look at them closely. How intricate every little thing is, and you, what general revelation can show us first off too, and I'll we'll look at just some pictures in a second, is the creativity of God too. Uh, you can know by looking at this though, you have a God who creates beauty, a God who is so powerful because you think about the world, right? You think about uh, the, the, our, the smallness of us and the bigness of the universe and the world that we live in. You can look at things like the moon. Oh, wait, the... Uh, the moon, um, I want to get a picture of the moon, somehow ended up with E.T. here. Moving on, uh, you can look at the animal life, right? You can begin to say, look at all the diversity of the animal kingdom. Now, I mean, once again, we're, we're fighting against modern day, you know, where, where does 
you know, evolution lead us, right? It leads us into these categories where everything is so diverse. But I think you could have a way to speak into that, whether your kids have already been taught that and or, you know, you're able to kind of start from square one. But look at the diversity of, of the animal kingdom. What, what, you know, think about why they're so different and, and where it all came from. It came from a, a creative God who loves, you know, his his creatures and has thought of all sorts. I mean, think about what it took to think of this or these or these, right? Now, oh, look at that little baby gorilla. I like gorillas. You know, my favorite animal, if we're going to ask my favorite animal are bears. You know, those things are awesome. Wolves are a good second, you know, uh, but you know, think about that. Where did these things come from? How, who designed them and thought of it? All just shows you just the, the creativity, the, 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 the power of our God to have started this all and thought through every little creature, every way that they would look and be designed. I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible. Think about that. Look at these giant things. Who made these suckers, right? Well, I mean, look at it. Obviously, God has designed the large, and he's made the little, the small, the tiny little animals. Um, and, uh, you know, we may not all love these types of animals the same, but it does show us something. When you look out there, you can say, in general revelation, I can know certain things about God. You can't know everything about God. In fact, you can't look at general revelation and, and you know nature and just say okay all these things you can know everything you can it doesn't get you to the specifics right it gets you to the, there's a god uh general revelation can reveal a conscience like there's a part of me that knows right from wrong it's buried deep down in there we can know that god is a moral god he's put things in just by the way that we interact and i mean people whether they know god or not they, they, they do know that there's deep down, they may not affirm it, but they deep down they know there's such a thing as right and wrong. And so then the next thing we have to ask then is, okay, if that's general revelation, that should be stuff that we could just walk with our kids and talk about and show them. Then what about special revelation? Special revelation is the Bible. You see, this is, this is where you get down to it, is general revelation is, is so to speak, uh, and it's what the parents guide said to, today. I love the illustration. It's the it's the baton. You know, you build up that there is a God, that there must be from the things that we can see out there. And and really, when you explore the universe, it, it does. It leads so many to an understanding of that we must have had a God. We must have a God who has started things. And he must be moral because of the things that he has done and placed here. Uh, he must be powerful. But But we don't have to stay in the realm of must. We don't have to stay in the realm of, well, who is he and what's his name and what's he really like? Uh, we can go to the Bible. I mean, think about this. The Bible is God's letter. It's his letter for who he is to a people. And so if you were going to ask, if God were to design a letter and write it and tell people, here's who I am, here's what I want you to know about who you are and what I made you for, uh, he, he didn't do it in the clouds. He didn't do it so you might just look up and read it. No, he, he wrote through men to give a, 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 to record through history to a people who he was. And so that's what we look at when we read the Bible. God, the Bible is God's special revelation. It tells us who he is, what he's like, how we can know him even better. It, it tells us the more, so much more about him. Because now we're picking up more things. It's, it's like moving into a home and finding remnants of a person. You, you know that they live. You might have a smell that you could see. You might be things. But it's, you know, it's one thing to kind of say, okay, these people were either slobs because they didn't, they didn't clean well, it seems. But when you find old pictures and find letters that maybe that person wrote, maybe they're in a box somewhere, you can find out more exactly who this person was. Uh, you know. And so this is what the Bible is. The Bible is, is, is not just a... It's a letter to show us who God is and what he expects of us and this whole story of why we're here. And so that's why it's it's so much more important uh, than than the general revelation piece is because you only get, get so much with general. And it's important. That's why the Bible, we're told to, to talk to our children as we go along the way. But the special comes in and interprets that for us. It tells us how we should look at these things. It tells us so much more about who God is. I want to look at our verse today. Uh, and they're going to come from Psalm 19. So I'm going to open up my text for you today. 
Uh, and we're going to look at Psalm 19 together. And so here is what the text says in Psalm uh, 19. It says this, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the expanse proclaims the work of his hands. Day after day they pour out speech. Night after night they communicate knowledge. There is no speech. There are no words. Their voice is not heard. Their message has gone out to the whole earth, and their words to the end of the world. So he's just talking about the, the skies, the same thing we've been talking about right now, the expanse. You can go and look and see all these things. In the heavens, he has pitched a tent for the sun. It's like a bridegroom coming from his home. It rejoices like an athlete running a course. It rises from one end of the heavens and circles to the other end. Nothing is hidden from its heat. Now notice we've been talking about creation up to this point, right? This has uh, been talking up at this point Okay, all that the heavens declare the glory of God. We get to see that right now. And now he's going to switch. And notice how he switches. He says the following. The instruction of the Lord is perfect, renewing one's life. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy, making the inexperienced wise. The precepts of the Lord are right, making the heart glad. The command of the Lord is radiant, making the eyes light up. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are reliable and altogether righteous. They're more desirable than gold and an abundance of pure gold and sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb. In addition, your servant is warned by them and in keeping them there is an abundant reward. I want you to notice he goes from creation, he goes from this expanse that's out there and all that we can know. And that's why it's important to be involved with studying general revelation. But then he switches and really, what does he say? He just keeps focusing on all those things that are specific, the instruction, the, the, the words of law, the, the commands. These are the things that are important here. The precepts, uh, the testimony, all of this is special revelation. This comes from the word of God. And so that's what we're seeing here is that's the most important because that's God's letter to us about him. It's what will help us. It will help give us direction for how we live. It'll give us uh, instruction of who he is and tell us how to live our lives. So uh, you know, that's why it's so important, guys, that we're trying to say that we, we have the Bible in our homes and we do this often is because that's, what's gonna, that's really going to get us to know God. A lot of people say, well, I can know God. I have church by myself. And most of the time what that means is I'm going to sit somewhere and just reflect or meditate. And if you want to meditate and just kind of clear your mind, I guess, um, clear it to fill it with what, though? Uh, what the Bible means, we should meditate on the words of God. We should, should make it to where we fill it with his word, fill it with things of him that will help us uh, live out the way that he's called us to live. All right, so I want you to think about that. Find cool ways to kind of teach your kids that. Maybe take them on a walk when you go on the walk. Show some of that stuff and talk about the importance of general revelation. And don't be afraid to use words like, gee, even if you didn't grow up being taught what general or special revelation is, talk to them about it uh, and, and use those terms. It'll help as we grow in our knowledge of that. All right, so I hope you have a good rest of the day and uh, you have a good time teaching your kids.